I'm Evan, the education program leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from the root cellar of rhythm. This week we're going to use the Instrument Exploration Toolkit to look closely at one of these. One of the most interesting and possibly important instruments of the 20th century. It was invented back in 1919 by Lev Sergeyevich Theremin, or Leon Theremin. So we're going to use the Instrument Exploration Toolkit to look at how it's designed. We're going to make it vibrate. We're going to control the vibration. We'll discuss the timbre, and we'll try our best to make some music with it. Really, the theremin looks more like a radio than an instrument. It has a box with some knobs, a piece of metal sticking out here, and I have a piece of metal sticking out here, and they sure look like antennae. On the front, we have a power switch. I have a knob that says volume. I have a knob that says pitch. Then I have a knob that says waveform and a knob that says brightness. And a power cord should fit right in here. That's it. Not much has changed about the design of the theremin as far as how you interact with it. The National Music Center has an RCA model from the late 1920s. And while the box is bigger for the larger electronic bits, the antennas are laid out in the exact same way. Each of these controls an aspect of the sound. Now, it's doing nothing. Let's find my power cord. Now it's plugged in, I'm gonna flip it on. It still does nothing. I need to attach a cord to this audio out. So I'm gonna plug a cord into my audio out. Turn it on. This side still needs to go into something. So here's a simple one. How do I put energy into this instrument to make it vibrate? Is it struck, pluck, air, or electric? The fact that this is plugged into the wall, the fact that I need to take an audio signal out to a speaker shows me that this is definitely an electronic instrument, although I'm sure this is not a big surprise to anyone. Final step, I'm gonna plug this into my amplifier. Turn that on, turn this on. So one of these antennas controls pitch and one of them controls volume. Which one is which? So the straight antenna controls the pitch. The closer I get to it, the higher it goes. This curvy antenna down here controls the volume. The closer to it I am, the quieter it is. So even though there are a pitch and volume knob, you do not use these to control the pitch and the volume while you play it. Rather, these change the size of the bubble of the electromagnetic field. How far away do I have to be from this to change the pitch? Same with the volume. So the theremin is driving a speaker. This antenna controls the speed of the vibration. This antenna controls the size of the vibration. Up until this point, people were using the speaker to try to recreate voices or musical instruments. But here comes along an object that is now treating the speaker as the musical instrument creating a vibration based on an electric signal that sounds unlike any acoustic instrument out there. This is truly revolutionary. If you want to learn more about speakers, watch our video on the Sonica, link below. So we figured out a lot of information about this instrument. We figured out that a speaker is the vibrating part of the instrument and that is driven by electricity. We can control the flow of electricity with these antennas. Another thing you will have noticed is that I don't actually touch the theremin to play it. All I have to do is be near it. This is very fancy technology for 1919. Leon Theremin traveled throughout Russia, then Europe, then the USA to show off his amazing invention. With his hand motions, it was like he was pulling notes out of the air or the ether. So his first name for it was the ether wave. It was later renamed a theremin. Okay, so we figured out that the theremin plays notes depending on how we move around it. So here's the question. How does it know what, where I'm moving? I mean, it's sensing me somehow, but what is it sensing? I mean, what are our options? Could be a heat sensor. Then shouldn't I be able to blow hot air onto it? I don't think it's heat. Could be picking up my movement. But why does it care if I'm moving closer to it? Also, this object doesn't set it off. So it's not set off by plastic. Let's try a piece of wood. No. How about some metal? So the fact that when I put the piece of plastic next to it, it does nothing, but when I put the piece of metal next to it, it sets it off, makes me think that electricity is involved. Really, both of these antennas have an electromagnetic bubble surrounding them. We also have an electromagnetic bubble surrounding us. It's not very strong. It's not like you can shoot lightning bolts out of your fingertips, but it's there. When my electronic field enters the theremin's electronic field, 
Oh. It senses it. The closer my hand gets to this antenna, the stronger it feels my electromagnetic field. <whistles> because metal conducts electricity, my electromagnetic field flows right into it. <whistles> Whereas it does not flow into the plastic. This is how the theremin reads my movement. Let's take a look in the spectrogram to see the theremin sound print and talk about the timbre. We used the spectrogram in our video about the voice, but let's do a quick refresher. From top to bottom, the Y axis, it shows us pitch. Low pitch down here, high pitch up here. It also lists the hertz along the side, which is the number of vibrations per second or the number of sound waves per second. It shows us volume based on the color. Very quiet shows up as black to blue, green, yellow to orange to red. Red's the loudest. It also gives us information about the timbre. Ah! We have our initial sound wave, but then we have all these other ripples within the sound wave. These are sound waves within sound waves. They're often called overtones. So let's look at the timbre of the theremin. You can see with the siren sound, it paints very vivid lines. This is how the timbre changes when I move the waveform knob and the brightness knob. So the waveform chooses our initial timbre and then the brightness knob decides how many of the overtones get through. The highest pitch I can get is up here. I can actually use the mouse to figure out what that is. That was about 3,464 vibrations per second. I can get a low enough frequency that I can hear individual clicks. For a lot of people, this was the sound of the future. It was a very new timbre. Depending on how it was used, it could sound like a sweet voice or just a very annoying siren. The volume antenna actually gives you a lot of control over how the timbre ends up sounding. It acts as an envelope, how the note begins and ends. This becomes a very important control on future synthesizers. Anyone can make sound on a theremin. It picks up all of our limbs. With this instrument, you could play anything. Golden oldies. Classical music. TV theme songs. Pop hits. All right, so while anyone can play the theremin, it's actually quite difficult to master. I've demonstrated a lot of instruments over the years to a lot of students, and this one still stumps me. Most instruments I know where to push to get a specific note, where here I'm playing the air. It's hard to play air. I want feedback. Early players like Clara Rockmore and Leon Theremin himself would play with orchestras or piano players, and that would at least keep them in the right key. Because it's so hard to play specific notes, it was often used for sound effects or just atmosphere. After the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still, many people connected the sound of this with UFOs. It's almost become a cliché for just eerie sound. I believe it was also used for Scooby-Doo ghosts. I once thought that very few people would bother mastering the theremin, but then I met YouTube. I'll post a couple of my favorites in the comments. There's some false rumors about where the theremin's been used. The original Star Trek theme. Nope. Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys. They used a theremin-like instrument, but they developed a brand new one so that they could get the notes more easily. Mr. Theremin led a very interesting life. Like that time he had to develop Soviet spy gear. Look him up. For an instrument that hardly anyone can play, the theremin has had a huge influence on how music now sounds. Listen for its spooky sounds in movies and television shows. When you hear a synthesizer or other electronic instrument, think of its granddaddy here. I'll also post a link to the spectrogram that we played with. You can click and drag with a mouse and get very theremin-esque sounds. So have fun painting lines of sound with that. Until next time, happy exploring.
Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate today.